business along quicker. You don't have to wait for a, either a select board meeting to come up or you have to wait for annual town meeting for the major decisions that can only be made by a legislative body. Mm -hmm. So that, yes, that does slow the process down mm -hmm. um, and it can get frustrating in a, in a community that's bigger. Mm -hmm. But what I noticed living in, uh, working in East Long Meadow as a council on aging director there for 15 years, we made the transition from town meeting, which, which is called open town meeting, mm -hmm. to a seven member council mm. within not kidding you, within within a month of that transition, I saw civic engagement crumble. Really? Where you would have people who would typically show up at a select board meeting that were always there, uh -huh. usually the same person that was always at town meeting asking those important questions, uh -huh. they were there making sure that, that the select board, that the select board was asking the right questions and, not, and, and being as transparent as possible. They kept uh -huh. you accountable. So um, I saw it immediately. And I said, you know what? I will. I, I don't think I'll ever work in a town that doesn't have open town meeting. Which brought you to Hadley. Which brought me to Hadley. Mm -hmm. Yep. Before we get to your work here, mm -hmm. tell us about your personal life in terms of your family. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you married? Do you have children? I heard you mention a daughter, so yep. I know that. Yep. So I, as I said, I kind of a townie in Wilbraham, so I, um, my kids are there, my, all my children were born there. Uh -huh. they, I have three, um, and a hus my husband is a youth pastor in Hamden, mm -hmm. and very involved with kids, and specifically young adults, also coaches at the local level. My youngest daughter um, lives with us, but I have to say, it's not my house anymore. She bought, we sold the house to her, and we have just in the middle of a renovation project of a very small, 100-year-old little shack <laughs> on a in, pond in Wilbraham. In Wilbraham. Yes, mm -hmm. 900, uh, nine, what is it, 900 square feet. You're downsizing, that's what we all we, do we, as we, we get older. We hadn't intended to, <laughs> we hadn't intended to. So um, she is a coach at AIC, oh. and I have a son in Nashville. Okay, and music business? He is in business. He uh, manages a, it's called Urban Juicer. If anyone's ever been to Nashville, please visit them. There's five stores there. Urban oh. Juicer. Urban it's Juicer. Urban Juicer. And Are we talking juice juice? It's juice juice. Yeah, <laughs> okay. regular old juice, healthy juices. <laughs> healthy Along juices. with um, members of his band, um, they traveled for oh, okay. a couple of years, but have settled in Nashville. So mm -hmm. um, some of them are still involved with music, and all of them work for this one company. Uh, a very Ur young company, Urban, Urban Juicer. Juicer. Yeah. And the band is it a country music band? It it is country. It was what they called indie for a while. Oh but yeah. They transitioned, um, and most of the the band doesn't play together much anymore. Uh, the one of the uh, members is still writing music, and um, some of the music that people hear is part of what he has written. But, okay. Um, yes. Yeah. And then I have a daughter who's a nurse practitioner in a pediatric um, ER in Delaware. In Delaware. In Delaware, and I have two awesome little boys, grandchildren, so. So you have the two grandchildren. Yes. Just boy, girl. Two boys. Two boys. And I'm the favorite. And do you get to see much of your we, I used away to. Children? I used to. I used to be able to go down there a lot, but during, um, any time I came back this past year, I'd have to quarantine. Oh, yeah. So we, I have not seen them as much as I'd like to. But thankfully, there's FaceTime. So we, <laughs> yes. My, Brennan, who's much, you know, my youngest is Rory, he's one, he, he's, a, you know, he's, he's not going to sit still. So, it's really nice to hear. It's something you'd understand, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yes. Um, when we were discussing a little bit what we might talk about today, you uh, told me that you were a twin. Yes. Which I always find interesting. Mm -hmm. And what I think that people might most connect with is to talk as you did with me about the difference between you and your sister because it's very it highlights who you are mm -hmm. with an opposite really right the only thing we have in common is that we both work in a municipal in the municipality she does too she does too so she is a um, risk manager for the city of east hartford oh okay um but we are totally different i am much more uh, very social um, I need to be around people, very active, um, and she loves to be home. <laughs> and she, her office is tucked away up in the corner of, of her building, and she loves it that way, and she does her busy work, and that's it, and comes home. And 
Um, yeah, so we're very, very different. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, you're in a job that requires you to be a people person. Mm -hmm. So let us transition to the fact that you came to Hadley. And I wonder, I know that you want to be in municipal government, that you're a junkie, and that Hadley suits what you want to do with your life at this point. But I wonder what specifically brought you to want to be in this town. Okay. And I know some of that has to do with your Midwestern roots, if you mm -hmm. will, on your paternal side. Right. But why Hadley? So I have to go back to about, it's probably seven years ago after working um, throughout the past 25, 30 years at as in role, different roles of senior centers, okay. um, and always, always observing how things were happening, always observing and watching the town administrator or the town manager. Um, I decided, yes. you know what, I, I, I'm going to do what I want. I really wanted to be a town administrator, and so I had a really wonderful opportunity to. Uh, and I have to say, uh, I think mentors is, uh, is probably the most important thing that's ever happened to me in my life, and I hope everybody has had a mentor. But I happened to have somebody from the Mass Municipal Association, her name's Denise Baker, and she, I, I was involved because I was also involved in Wilbraham on my own finance committee. Mm -hmm. And she, we connected, and she's kind of the person in charge of education and working with all the state associations. And she's, she knew that I was like starving to learn more about municipal government. And so she said, you know, you really should um, apply to a program called, from Suffolk. Uh, it's called public health management and it's basically in conjunction with MMA um, it's, it's MMA Mass Municipal Association thank you so that Suffolk program it was a nine-month program for those that are in already in municipal government but looking to, to go um, to a different role in their government it didn't have to be a, a, a town manager it could have been a mayor it could be anything like that um, and so I, I applied and I got accepted, but I, my town that I worked for wasn't going to pay for it. So I did apply for a very competitive um, scholarship that Denise told me about. And so half of it was paid for and I paid for the other half. So I did that, that and as well as I did go back to get my MBA. Okay. So that was, the, the, you know, that was my path. That's the, that's the path one takes to become because that's Something Pretty much I don't know. How yeah, do you become a town administrator? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the credentials, you, you have to have an MBA or an MPA. Not always, because you will get people who've been in, doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. um, but I was coming from a non-traditional background. You yeah. know, I was coming from the senior center world. Mm -hmm. um, I did have my finance committee background, but um, it, I think that was very beneficial. Mm -hmm. But you asked about why Hadley, and my very first class, um, at the Suffolk program was we learned about different types of towns. And every town fit into one of five categories. And I don't remember all of them. I meant to, I meant to write those down before I got here today. But Most but, interesting is which one is Hadley. <laughs> right, right. And so there is a, you know, I can remember when they talked about a community like Natick. That was called a shopkeeper. Okay. That's where it started off as, as a small town, but built up to main shopping centers and, mm -hmm. and you know, busy, busy highways and things like that. Yep. A and, Boston um, suburb. Right. Yeah. And a patriarch community, which was, I guess you would, that they even called it a patriarch, you know. Um, no, it wasn't patriarch. Oh, and it wasn't, I don't remember the name of it. But anyways, um, they talked about one type of town. Mm -hmm. And it is exactly, it, I was like, this is why I loved Hamden the patriarch, the matriarch. They went into all of these examples that I said, I, I could have written this part. This is exactly what Hamden, that's why I loved it. Uh -huh. But at the same time, they, we learned about different management styles. Mm. And depending on what, everybody has different types of management styles. Absolutely. Whatever type you were fit better with a certain type of town. So you had to assess your own management style. It was kind of like connect the in yeah. relationship to yes. what the town's style is. Right. And so my management style was definitely more um, team team building, getting very personable, getting mm -hmm. to know all of the people involved in the community um, in a small town. And they called it a yeoman type 
town. Really? Okay. So Hadley is so a, Hadley is is according to his professor yes. is a yeoman type, and so was Hamden. I'm going back in my mind, Carolyn, to what is a yeoman, and in my mind, that's a farm worker. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, and that that's the basis, the foundation of that community, and still has a lot of influence in all of the decision making. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, that was part of what the draw was. But it was also because I, I was here a lot growing up because my dad worked for um, UMass as a professor in Stockbridge, mm -hmm. and so I spent a lot of time here. Even though I'm not a dairy farmer, <laughs> I, like I, I always say, it's kind of in my DNA. There were things that were always I was always drawn to because it was always in discussions in the house and mm -hmm. he would come home and say what he was working with and working on and um, just coming back and forth here. Um, so that, so I felt somewhat of an affinity towards the town in general and having worked at Shady Lawn mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. having lived in Amherst. Um, so that was one of the things that was appealing to me and so when I talk about the importance of a mentor. One of my mentors was um, a former Longmeadow town manager, Stephen Crane. He's mm -hmm. now in Concord. Um, he called me one day to recruit me to try to work for Longmeadow as their um, as their COA director because mm -hmm. they were without one. And I said, I don't think so. It's not what I want to do. But I said, I'll come and meet. I'll meet you and I'll and we'll interview. And we started talking and and we hit it off really well. But but I can remember him saying to me, you know, Carolyn, um, you don't have to worry about doing the budget. You don't have to worry about doing anything. I do the budget <laughs> as a town manager. And I said, well, that's why you have a rundown senior center, and that's why you don't have enough staff, because uh -huh. you're doing the advocating. So I couldn't work here. I have to do my <laughs> own advocating. But we hit it off. Uh -huh. But one of he, he just really, um, he took me under his wing. We would get together a lot, and he would, answer all my questions and concerns, but when the recruiter for Hadley was um, looking for um, applicants, he called Stephen, because he knew Stephen, and said, Stephen, who do you know would fit Hadley? And he goes, I know somebody exactly who would fit Hadley. And so that's kind of how that happened. So are you uh, keeping your eyes open for matriarchs and patriarchs and mentors? Yeah. In the Hadley? I am. Volunteers? <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yeah, and I think I have met some. Yeah, I have okay. met some. I mean, the, the challenge is, like I mentioned, is COVID. I can't be out in the community like yeah. I'd like to be. Um, I, I really like to meet people and be around them. So, well, your management style is team building, is people oriented. Yeah. Does that fit so far? Oh, I would say definitely. I definitely. think part of the joys. Um, I really feel like I serve several groups of people. I serve the residents, I serve my select board, but I serve my employees. Mm -hmm. And I think that they have been extremely supportive and I'm doing as much as I can to support them and just provide a different perspective about how important the employees are in town, that everything you see here um, can't happen with people in these municipal buildings. Do you lean toward the fact uh, that many towns feel that the employees in a town should live in the town? I, you know, I don't know if the, everyone realized how many employees work in, for Hadley that live in Hadley. How many? Um, the over 50, I think we figured over 56 percent. Over 56? Of the town. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. A lot. In what, even better is the skill set from, that they bring to the town is incredible. You know, it's not as common in a small community. Hadley has impressed you. Very much. With its employees. So, they, actually, as I think about this, the Hadley employees are yeoman type employees. They work really, really hard. Wow. Longer than your normal hours, above and beyond their job descriptions. So Hadley is getting quite a bang for its buck. They certainly are. <laughs> yep. Okay, good to know. Yep. Well, let me think. Your management style suits, you love the town. Let's talk about what you like best. What, give me a highlight moment since it, you have arrived in this position. So this is, this is gonna sound very like, well, that's not what I was looking for. The <laughs> I'm not looking for anything, The kid. highlight right now <laughs> that I have Honestly, yeah. When I tell people I love my commute, 
but it, to come over that hill where Barstow's is oh. in the morning and look out at that river is gorgeous. And then at home, I get to come down and see Mitch's Marina on my right. It right, and my, I've got the I've got the contacts right because I'm still getting to know the town. Yeah, you're on. You're coming down 47. I'm, coming to, I'm on 47, and yes. it's just beautiful and there are days where I said I can't believe I get to do this um, <laughs> and then I walk in the building and the fire hose hits and it's and it's like that all, all day long but I do think it's um I, it, I have to say it's the employees they just really um, very very diverse um, come from different perspectives um, so employees in this town would be fire people mm -hmm. police people town hall employees School. schools DPW. Yeah, absolutely. All of these yeah. are under your umbrella. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, some of those positions would direct would be report directly as well to the select board uh -huh. ultimately, uh -huh. but they're kind of under my um, you know day to day operations and communicating with all of them. So the select board is your boss. They are my boss. But your employees are very critical in there. Yes. And the town residents are quite literally Abs funding you, right? Oh, absolutely. I always say, you know, um, they're your customers. Mm. The residents are your customers. That's who you serve, and you can't be there without them. Mm -hmm. um, but I've never, I honestly, I've never, you know, when you see, you know, when you see your tax collector, I mean, your yeah, your tax collector go drive to someone's house because they can't get there in time to pay their bill. Or isn't that it's, amazing? It's amazing, and, it and that's that's not unique. You see that above and beyond things. The fire chief and the police chief doing things that I've never seen in the community of going <laughs> above and beyond, helping with the meals, helping with parades and and events. It's it's really um, it's remarkable. I think it's it is what you want a community to be. Yeah. And so seldom in these days, it's. It's really true. When, when I, you know, the, and forgive me if I get some of these groups wrong because I haven't been able to get out and, and meet everybody, but the Young Mothers Club, no, the Young Men's Club. Oh, uh, yes. The Mothers Club. And the there mothers is a Mothers Club. Club. You don't hear that anymore. Oh. And they're active. They're active. Usually you're in a community where those type of organizations are fading away. Mm -hmm. And so it's really nice to see, and that's where I want to be able to go out and meet people. Oh, yeah. Um, because you know, that's, that's where the heart, you know, or, or I'll talk to, you know, one of my select board members, you know, you know, I was out ice fishing and I just got to give you this feedback. Could you take a look at that? And I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. I love it. Or, yeah. So it's, um, it, I, I like that. I yeah. like that small town. Um, Sounds community. like you're happy here. I am. But that doesn't mean there aren't things to be worked upon. Yes? Yes. Would you care to talk about those? Well, I, I think I, I think it's obvious that I, I, I have a lot of um, um, support for the employees, and I want to do as much as I can to support I am them. Definitely hearing so that. So that is definitely um, that is a priority for mm -hmm. for me to be able to help the select board do that, and I know the select board appreciates the employees as well. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to um, maintain that because there's. It's easy to get used to um, talent or skills <laughs> and kind of have a status quo. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really important to continue to support them in as many ways as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's just that we need to look at ways that um, there's Every, most municipalities, and, and Hadley has worked really hard through a few different types of ways of looking at their salaries. Are they where they should be? I think some of them are. I think some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that it, it is an cons underlying concern. And so I want to do whatever I can to help the select board look at that to make sure Hadley's where they should be. Okay. Um, but it's a challenge and that takes money sometimes and I know that's difficult, especially Dirty during, word these days. I know, during these <laughs> during these times. But yes. um, I, I do think they are appreciated, but we just gotta be able to show them in ways that we can. Okay. Would you say that that's your major fo focus right now in terms of issues in this town? Well, I think there's other, there's, the town has put together a wonderful master plan, open space plan. Um, they, they have some wonderful documents. David Nixon was in, really provided some strong,
foundations of policies and mm -hmm. procedures. He was brilliant with that. And it's being able to make sure the worst thing working in a community for any municipal employee anywhere mm -hmm. is you put these, get these wonderful documents and then you don't do anything with them. So I want to be, be able to make sure that Hadley's following what volunteers have put together, like the open space, like mm -hmm. the master plan, mm -hmm. um, that, that it's, we're really listening to the residents for what they want. Mm -hmm. And I know there's that challenge of Route 9, it's a huge project coming up, Yes. The challenge of keeping agricultural, keeping as much space, open space, um, and that's a really hard balance. That's where Hadley. When I when people when I tell people where I work now, they say, "Oh yeah, that's a cute little town." I went, <laughs> "It's a beautiful town, but cute it's a big town. business. There's a big business, and I think that um, that what you see visually is as much of a challenge as um, the community wanting to still keep it small town." And so it's really yes. trying to balance that and being able to maintain the inf infrastructure that's going to support all of that. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's there's a need to have more help with, you know, whether it's a, a planner or consultants to help with that to make sure mm -hmm. our infrastructure is sound and safe. And um, we have a DPW director who's very aware of it. But it's it's difficult for Hadley to get to get grants because of its uniqueness, of its large agricultural um, layout, and um, Route 9, where it fits in the university. Um, if you put it all together, it doesn't really make a pie, does it? It, it doesn't. It a slice it, of pumpkin and a slice of berry. It and does, and I, and I think it's hard, and I, and I know there's a level of frustration, and we, we need to get more grants, but I will tell you, just working with our DPW um, director, and and uh, even just last week, meeting with, um, I think it was um, DEP, to try to get grants to help with some of the funding. DEP, Department, Department of Environmental, Environmental Protection, Protection. Yeah, okay. of looking at uh, things that need, need assistance, mm -hmm. and looking at bridges that are, you know, need some infrastructure support. Yeah. Um, that they basically told us, you know, yeah, and I, I guess it's the easiest way to say it is you're not poor enough, you got a low tax rate, you know, we're not going to... So that mitigates getting grants. It, it, it's frustrating, and, and yeah. I think we're, Hadley has worked hard to keep those taxes low, uh -huh. um, but in some ways, you know, you just want to say, wait, we're getting penalized for that? <laughs> so it's very frustrating, oh. um, so we have to be really creative. Something I hadn't thought of, Carolyn, yeah. I mean, I think... Hadley has a reputation for keeping us, but there, is, there are consequences for that. The, yeah, and I yeah. think, um, I'm hoping that will change in the future with, with how the state sees that, and it, that's yeah. where I'm gonna have to take a stronger role in when we, when we do submit grants, I wanna be able to say, you know, have more dialogue versus just the submission of the grant. Got it. Because um, people, I don't, I, it, and actually, when I talk to my, you know, anybody, from Wilbraham and what, 45 minutes away? Yeah. And I tell him, yeah, but we've got, you know, Hadley is small. We've all, all of Route 9, they thought, oh, I thought that was Amherst. No, no. it's not, well, it's not. And so I think there's a perception, but that isn't a part, that, but that's not a part of Hadley. There's a perception around here that Hadley has been wise, I've heard over the years, in terms of putting that out there on the edge. And it does mm -hmm. look like Amherst. But enabling Hadley to keep the agricultural feel and this wonderful center, right, uh, feel of mm -hmm. a small town, right, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I guess I want to make sure that you have said what you want to say to whatever audience that we have, and I'm wondering if we have missed anything major in this conversation. We've been going on uh, almost 45 minutes. It's delightful talking to you. Well, thank you. It's been nice to share everything. Yeah. But uh, anything you want to make sure we cover in this time? Um, I and I will open it to questions momentarily. There okay. may be things out there, but just... Uh, um, I don't think so. You good? I, yeah, I think... Um, I think you've asked great questions, and it's kind of helped me formulate some thoughts. And I think so. you've answered them 
greatly. Thank you. Thank <laughs> uh, you. Love talking with you. Yeah, that's, this is very nice. And I want to, Jane is over our shoulders here and is uh, monitoring any questions Nothing or comments. Questions. Jane, anything? Nothing yet. This Jane, is your opportunity. We got her. Jane, do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jane always has My questions, boss. fortunately. <laughs> your boss. <laughs> I, I do. I would like to say one of the things that got me a good, a good start was when I first started. Jane, had I started yet? I think it was the Sunday before I was going to start. Jane took me on a wonderful tour. How long did that last? <laughs> like a Gilligan tour. It was four <laughs> hours, right? It was four hours on, but it was fascinating. I mean, the difference in... Um, every single street. Every single street every you single took her street. down? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was four hours. It was, then she had me up on a ladder in her yard getting peaches. <laughs> Is I, that your I, reward for that? <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> she is nothing if not thorough. <laughs> yes. Okay, I have a question. Go for it, Missy. Can you see a way that taking advantage of the low tax rate that should make it affordable for seniors and moderate income families, including diverse background? Do you well, need that again? Or well, what okay? was the first part of the question? Do the whole thing again, Jane, make sure. Can you see a way that taking advantage of the low tax rate that should make it affordable for seniors and moderate income families, including those of diverse backgrounds. You okay on that? Do you follow uh, the question? So to take advantage, I, I, I'm not sure. Can you use, I think, Jane, can you use, and people, a low tax rate, even though we have it, is there a way that that can be used advantageously for those who have less? So seniors. that's the wonderful part about having the low tax rate. And let me ask if that the person okay. asking the question, I hope I got that right. But go ahead and answer it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that was the question. Okay. So having been a senior center director for many years, yes. that was always my concern because yeah. there were um, there are many seniors who. Um, that we often use when we were advocating for. Um, seniors was you know seniors can be house rich but income poor absolutely so you can drive by a house that might be valued at three hundred thousand uh -huh. um, that doesn't mean that that older adult is living high and mighty or can put food on the table or can put food on the table yeah. so that is that is absolutely and i think that's been the heart of those that have been in elected positions is to keep that tax rate low for that specific reason for those that are struggling. Yes. Um, I, it's hard with the grants. The grants are looking for a, a strong, there's a new term that they're using called environmental justice. Okay. So those that tend to be suffering the most from climate change and things like that are living in more of an urban area. Yes. So of course Hadley doesn't fit an urban area and there isn't a strong cluster in a city, in, you know, that, those things that would be impacted by climate change. Um, and so that's become a new criteria. Is that relevant to Hadley? It's not relevant, which is the problem. Okay. That's but the it's problem. big for the government or the for granting urban institutions. And for the, yes. Yeah. And so that's what we're finding is that's the challenge is that is 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 getting, you know, that's what we're dealing with. It sounds like you're at the frustrating challenged stage, but not at the point where you've seen the light the nature of the light at the end of that tunnel. Um, no, and my concern is that light's going to get dimmer. Because of Be things like envir environmental justice? Mm -hmm. The things that are used for criteria, so there's there's actually even a formula. So a lot of cities, uh, cities and towns um, are eligible for what's called, it's federal funds called Community Development Block yes. money. That is very strict on the proportion of low income people in the community and, and districts. Now, when I was, when we put up the senior center in Hamden, the community development block grant money used to automatically, if you were, they would look at the population 60 and over. Mm -hmm. That was considered low income because they were on fixed income. Yes. They have eliminated that formula. Oh. So now they're truly looking at a, a kind of a complicated formula okay. as to what they consider low income. And how does Hadley fit into that? formula is there, it? it's not competitive that's the problem it's not. Okay. it doesn't mean it's not there 
Oh. It doesn't mean it's not there. No, knowing we all know that everyone's there are there are people not not only just older adults, um, but there are people who are living um, with an income that is not bringing in enough to pay their expenses. We know there's a lot. Yeah. It's just it's not fitting into that wonderful formula that state and federal government think that everything should fit into. Two ships passing in the night. Yes. Next yeah. question. So part of your challenge. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next question. What is the most daunting task you are facing in the next few weeks? What is the most daunting task, and I'm repeating so, mm -hmm. that you are facing in the next few weeks? So that, that is prepared, is pre we prepared the budget. It is done. It is prepared. It is prepared. It is ready it's, to it be is presented. Now in, it's now in the hands of the finance committee. Okay. So in preparing the warrant that will go to town meeting. Okay. Um, and looking at some uh, some items that will need to go on that that such as the Route Nine widening project. We do have some. We do have a piece of sewer and water line that it, it's about a hundred years old that's going to need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. We will save a lot of money because of MassDOT. It is still going to cost us money, and okay. so we're getting those figures now. And I have met uh, with Representative Carey. I am meeting with Senator Comerford's staff tomorrow to see if we can get the state to help pay for that. Good. So that's happening at the same time, um, and so it's present. It's it's going to be the schedule right now. It's going to be a lot of meetings at night, mm -hmm. um, and meeting with the finance committee and the department heads and and always wanting to be there to support the department heads, but knowing that this is a budget I have to, that it is, I recommend it to the Finance Committee to review, ask questions, meet with everyone, have those hearings, and then make a rec recommendation. And to, and, to match, and to make sure we've got the revenues to support that. And you're working on a level funding? Is that the so this is, uh, this will be confusing. May I ask? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, make it as simple oh, as you I'm can for those of us who don't. I'm going to try. <laughs> so the, the select board asked um, for a level funded budget okay. and a level service budget. A level funded, but now you have to keep in mind that there are a lot of, we have uh, several collective bargaining units. Yes. So their, their increases are automatic. You cannot mess with those. That's a contract. That's contractual. We also have contractual employees. Okay. But then we also have non-union employees. Mm -hmm. So that level funded means you have to keep that bottom line the same. Mm -hmm. So if I get a one and a half percent increase, Yours goes down one and a half percent, or, potentially. Yep, or you have, there's an expense you have that has to go down, because that bottom line. It's the bottom line. And, and there's fixed costs, like if you lease. Oh. Nowadays, it's much more cost effective to lease equipment versus buying it. Buying yes, it. okay. So, but there's a cost to the lease. You have a contract with a lease. Mm -hmm. You have contracts with vendors to provide the service. So those contracts have to stay the same, mm -hmm. which leaves you, what do you, you know, yep. Yes. Shut the lights off. You're going to have to shut the lights oh, off. No. Yes. So it's similar at home. You know, it's similar. It's, it, there's a lot of, you, the mindset is like home. Some things aren't going to go down. So something else has got to go, which is what people who are struggling with their income mm -hmm. and what they pay out has to make those decisions all the time. I mean, I, I, I worked with seniors who were saying, well, I got to buy groceries this week. Mm -hmm. I can't buy my prescriptions this week. Do you have any sense of what the fixed cost percentage is in this town? You know what I'm, I'm saying? Sure. I, when I worked in the schools, we knew that 80% of our budget was pretty much fixed cost. It was keeping the lights on, it was keeping the buildings, the infrastructure together, which left the 20% adjustable. So, ha is that, am I making I, sense? Yes, having we're, I, I met with every department head, and the treasurer and I met with the, the larger departments, and they were amazing. Going back to say, I would have to go back and say that's not level funded. They mm. they totally want a zero. Uh huh. They would come back and some so some of them two or three times cutting and chopping. Mm. Now the level service is mm. you provide the same level of service, so that bottom line is going to go up because all of those things go up. Right, um, right. And so that's the difference between those two. And it sounds like they're mutually exclusive. 
How do you keep the same services? You can never, honestly, level funded you can't because yeah. you still have health benefits, you still have retirement that's, benefits. That's what I was thinking. So, so those go up automatically. Yes. So you can never truly have a bottom line that's going to stay exactly the same. Um, so, so that's the challenge. But mm -hmm. um, a, the department heads have brought back very lean, lean budgets. Good. And so um, for you. That, but that is the, that's going to be the biggest challenge is um, what's decided at town meeting as far as, you know, what will get funded. What you can and do. then as well as, well as um, working with uh, the revenues that we have, because mm. I, you know, revenues were down this year, hotel, motel, motor Are excise. you hopeful for an upswing in that over the next period? You know, we spend a lot of time looking at the budget. Um, you have an amazing assessor, Dan mm -hmm. and Susan. We met them last. Okay, so you they, they, they were great. right. They're yep. amazing. Knowledge yes. up there, amazing. They um, they can just look at Dan because he, especially because he's been here so long, and Susan because she knows what should be coming in, mm -hmm. what has been coming in, what hasn't been coming in and do some really good prediction. David Nixon was amazing at it. Mm -hmm. the, the, so the budget that was done for this year that we're in right now, mm -hmm. David did last spring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, revised it several times as COVID, the restrictions got, the, and the shutdowns became more significant. Yeah. He already had uh, predicted a low um, revenues. Yes. He was right on. So we follow <laughs> his, he has these one wonderful documents that we've used to Every single month, we plug in what the revenue is in, where are we to date, and he was extremely close to the already reduced um, revenues, which is important to know when we say level funded. That wasn't level funded from a normal non-COVID year. Right. Level funded this year is to a, uh, something that's already had, he had reduced it several times. It is based on past year of COVID. Right. Understood. Yep. Uh, I hope that answered the question, Jane. Are there anything questions else? of gender inequity to be addressed in the town? Are there questions of gender inequity that need to be addressed in Hadley? So having been here for seven months, I'm, I am um, very encouraged because the select board has appointed um, a committee um, for diversity and equity equity okay so they have been meeting together and they are working and are reporting back to the select board so that's where I think we're going to get some some good information regarding that so, that, so I'm still getting to know the community and but um, this committee is in the exploratory phase yes. to see what issues we may have yes okay mm -hmm. I hope that answers if not send us more who or what agency said that we should have a level funded budget who or what agency said that we should have a level funded budget? So that was that was when back in January when I, which typically the town administrator asked the select board what their priorities are and what um, what they would like for a budget. Okay. So um, having sense what would be coming, I recommended can we also, can we do a level service and a level. I'm sorry, a level funded and a level service. Can I tell you, and, I, and we didn't bring this up, but I'm also a select board member in my town. Okay. That's not uncommon. That's not uncommon. I don't find board. it a conflict of interest. I would think it would be very helpful to have both views. I can't oh, yeah, no. Yeah, we haven't. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I made sure. Um, I checked with the state to make sure it wasn't. just happened all at the same time when this okay. job was in. But what I was saying as a select board member, um, I'm, that's not uncommon that a select board would ask the town administrator I'm sorry for yes. a level service um, at for, for a, a year like this year. Okay. So I would say that was not an uncommon practice by. Okay. Yeah. So I think they're doing their due diligence to to protect the town. So you spoke with the select board about this, and they're the ones who said level fund and level service is what based we on were. my my recommendations. This is it's because a lot of the talk had been level funded. Okay. But I wanted that to make sure that, that there was a, a general understanding as well to the public that level service and level funding is different. And you were very clear in my I, I understanding. I hope so. It's Thank been a challenge. It's, it's hard. And it was hard for this, you know, the, the employees to understand what that meant. Because mm -hmm. um, it's probably a first year that many cities and towns have had to deal with that. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Any more questions from out there? And the questions were great, by the way, That's right. and very clarifying. So here she is, Carolyn Brennan. Carolyn, face the camera. Thank you so much.